What's up guys, we're back here again today with the sauna box, gonna be doing a sauna box update part two. In today's video, I'm gonna be going a bit more in depth into answering some of your guys' more frequently asked questions, a cleaning tutorial, as well as talking about how well the sauna box has been holding up for me in these past few months. All right, so getting straight into how well it has been holding up. So as you can see, I do keep it inside. So as far as external wear, there really just isn't much there, obviously. If you do keep it outdoors, things like wind and debris definitely could um, cause minor scratches or possibly some wear in certain areas for sure. But even looking on the inside, there's no serious signs of any wear whatsoever. You can even see on the door here, everything looks pretty well intact with, personally, I've had no problems whatsoever. Uh, even the frame overall, it still stands tall. You can see here though that I was going to mention is that it does kind of bulge out right here on this stand. And I think the reason for that, and I've seen a lot of other people have a few complaints about it, is actually just because of the entry point. It does kind of naturally poke out a little bit. So of course, I think when you're opening the zipper, taking it up all the way around, you do occasionally bump into this. I even have had a few times where the zipper will actually get stuck around this area and I almost have to like pull on it a little bit to get it fully open uh, over the top. But besides that, everything else is still very well intact. So overall, I gotta say within the past two months of having it, I've had almost zero problems at all. Everything still works, still steams up quite fine. I am going to be doing a temp test again just to show you guys how warm it does get because that'll actually lead us into some of our frequently asked questions. Now, leading into that, of course, is our first question of how hot does it actually get? As you can see, it is already getting pretty steamy in there. We've had it on level seven for about 20 minutes at this point. So, of course, I do actually have uh, a proper thermometer in there this time. So we're going to open it and give it a check. So, of course, as we come to grab the thermometer. You can see it's already whew, very, very, very steamy. So as I said, it still works super well. I've had no problems whatsoever. Let's see, we pull this out. It did fall on the floor. As we can see, it's at about 108 right now. I'm gonna try to reset it back up in there and let it get another shot just to see its max temp. All right, so it has been another few minutes. We're going to come back with my thermometer properly in its place and see if we can actually get a better reading this time. Still have it set up in the corner. And as of right now, as you can kind of see, it's at about 109.6. So I'd say about 110 degrees Fahrenheit or about 43 degrees Celsius. Now moving on to question number two is going to be after you use your sauna box, how do you actually clean it and how do you clean it properly? So sauna box states on their website in a little video they have on cleaning it, they actually recommend to open it just as so. Of course, the zipper does come around a bit more on the top and the bottom there, as you can see. And typically, if you have it outside, you can, of course, just rely on the wind or a nice breeze to come through. But of course, in my case, being indoors, obviously in a garage, it's gonna need a little more help. Now, with this inner flap here, of course, and again, as I said, with mine being indoors, you can simply just use a microfiber towel or really any towel uh, that you have, even the one that SaunaBox does provide you, given the SaunaBox and simply just come around and just wipe it off as so. Now, of course, with the sauna box interior and exterior being this kind of polyester uh, PVC type material, as you can see, just one wipe pretty much gets rid of most of it. So you could consider it to be uh, water resistant, not necessarily waterproof. And even just coming around here, you can see all those little droplets that were once there are pretty much just already gone. So maintaining and cleaning it really isn't all too hard. Of course, if you don't have a towel or you really just don't wanna go around wiping every single corner, you can of course just use a fan like this. So of course, while we're on the topic of cleaning, here is my super easy, super, I mean, anyone can do this cleaning tutorial. First thing you wanna do is of course, get your fan or of course you can use your towel, but 
let's be honest, using a fan would be a lot easier. I'm gonna come down here and switch it to one, and that's pretty much it. So of course, if you decide to use a microfiber towel or any towel of the sorts, or even a fan, or even decide to leave it outdoors just to let a breeze come through and air it out, maintaining and keeping it clean is really as simple as that. Now, next, of course, is going to be how do you clean the bottom mats? Because of course, this is going to be your sweat absorption mat. And typically, you can use either one of two methods. Sonobox does say that you can actually machine wash it. Or, of course, you can just like spray down with a hose like I do and just leave it out to dry. Whichever one works better for you and whichever one you feel more comfortable with to get a nice clean. Now next and thirdly, which is something that I was curious about, is can you actually have it indoors? Because for most people, whether you're in an apartment or if you really just don't have space in your front or backyard, is can you use it inside? Now with that being said, I would say that yes, it does work inside. But would I recommend putting it on carpet or even keeping it in your bedroom? That's a different question. Now if you are going to use it in something like your bedroom or anything like that, I would recommend keeping it on a hardwood floor. Keeping it on the carpet, of course that is possible that it could, you know, water could just get on the floor, your carpet could just start to actually build up that mold or that smell that your sauna box might not have. But of course you don't want your own carpet starting to have that smell. So I would recommend having some sort of mats, whether it just be hardwood flooring or having it on the garage like I do here, having some type of towel or something underneath to keep it from getting on the carpet. All right guys, that's gonna be the end of today's video. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully I was able to answer some of you guys' questions. Of course, if you do have any other questions, comments, concerns, helpful tips for myself or anyone else out there, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I do also have a link and code below if you are looking to get a sauna box for yourself, family member, friend, anything like that. It would be a great gift, especially for anyone looking to benefit their health this upcoming summer. Of course, that code is Ethan10, E-T-H-A-N, one zero at checkout. That'll get you 10% off anything at saunabox.com. And of course, if you guys did like this video, feel free to like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. And of course, take care.